Hi. So far we have learned about sequences, series and their convergence. We have also studied about geometric series and its sum and also harmonic series. Now we will focus, be focusing on general series. So you will be given a series and you will be asked to test whether it is convergent or not. So we will be discussing some methods to decide whether a given series is convergent or not. Okay. So basically when you, when you talk about convergence of a series, as I told you, suppose you have a series sigma UK, basically it means that when you add more and more terms, basically it should be actually go into some fixed finite sum or you as i told you the sequence of partial sums we should actually be converged that means when you add more and more terms uh, the final sum should actually be converging to a fixed and finite sum okay that is the idea okay so if it is like that suppose suppose you have a series sigma uk okay suppose you are adding more and more terms so you are adding more and more uk say here so that means even if you add more and more terms the sum should actually be converging to a fixed or finite sum that means the addition of this uk's should not affect the sum because the addition or the effect of this uk's should be negligible why because otherwise if i add uk and if the sum is the, if uk is big and if i add uk to the sum it will may actually make the sum bigger okay so you won't be getting a fixed or finite sum okay so as k goes to infinity the effect of this uk's should be negligible okay otherwise what will happen your sum will go on increasing or decreasing whatever may be so it will actually not be it will not be fixed it will be changing okay so this as k goes to infinity this uk cannot be big it should actually have negligible effect on the series so that is one idea which can we can uh, devise from common sense so that idea will be formally using a set test it is called the kth term test or nth term test okay so if sigma uk is a convergent series definitely your limit k tends to infinity uk should be zero this is one uh, simple test which will help you to decide whether a series is divergent or not okay so basically uh, the idea is this if the series is convergent as k becomes bigger the addition of the k term should not influence the sum okay if the addition of the k term, if k term is actually one Suppose the UK is 1, suppose UK is going to happen, your sum will not be fixed. Because if I add the thousandth term, the sum will increase by 1. If I am adding the 1 lakh term, again the sum will increase by 1. That means you will not be getting a fixed value. Your value will be going on increasing. Okay. So this is called the kth, ter kth test for kth term test for divergence. Okay. So uh, one important criteria for a sequence to be convergent is that the kth term should be go to 0. Okay, so UK should go to zero when K goes to infinity. That is one important test. Okay, and let me uh, tell you one more. Let me emphasize one more thing. This is basically it's not a sufficient condition. It is a necessary condition. It is not a sufficient condition. It is a necessary condition. Okay, what do you mean by that? That means for a series sigma UK to be convergent, definitely UK should go to zero as K becomes bigger. Okay, for a series sigma UK to be convergent uk should go to zero for uh, as k goes to infinity that is the meaning of necessary so for, in order for this to happen definitely this should happen that is the meaning of necessary condition okay but it is not a sufficient condition what do you mean by sufficient conditions merely if suppose as suppose you have a series sigma uk and suppose uk goes to zero as k tends to infinity this does not mean the series is convergent this does not mean the series is convergent that means just that just because uk goes to zero it is not sufficient to say that sigma uk is convergent a very good example is suppose you know about the series sigma 1 by k it is the harmonic series with p is equal to 1 and you know for harmonic series to be convergent what is the criteria that is your p should be greater than 1 and for it to be divergent p should be less than or equal to 1. i hope you remember the harmonic series sigma 1 by k raised to p okay for this series to be convergent your p should be greater than 1 and for this series to be divergent p will be less than or equal to 1 okay so that means sigma 1 by k square is convergent but sigma 1 by k is not convergent it is divergent okay so now you know that sigma 1 by k is divergent now if you look at the kth term here the kth term here is basically 1 by k okay so as k tends to infinity what happens this 1 by k goes to 0 okay so now we have a series in which uk goes to 0 okay but the series is still divergent okay so this condition that the kth term test is basically used to decide whether a series is divergent or not not convergent okay it will just give you an idea whether the series is divergent or not so it is called the kth term test for 
divergence okay so i'll state it once again so the uh, nth term or kth term terms for divergence if limit uk is not equal to zero the series will definitely diverge okay if the kth term is not actually becoming zero it will definitely diverging but if it is zero we can't say whether it is divergent or convergent you will have to use some other test okay it's a very simple test if you limit if the kth term does not go to zero definitely you can say that the, the series will be divergent but if it goes to zero we can't say whether it is divergent or convergent it can be divergent sometimes it can be convergent sometimes for example the series sigma 1 by k square it is convergent while the series sigma 1 by k is divergent these are the basically the harmonic series or p series which we have discussed earlier so from that i am telling this is conversion and this is divergent okay so here is here are some examples so if you look at this series sigma k okay is will the series be con di convergent or divergent because the nth term here is k now this will go to infinity as k tends to infinity therefore definitely you can say that this series is divergent okay this series is divergent but these two series this is divergent this is convergent but even though their kth terms are going to zero okay so now let us see look at some simple examples some simple series which we are we can use make use of this result let us look at some examples here okay so let us test the convergence of this series k by k plus one okay so let us look at this series k by k plus one now look at uk what is uk uk is actually k by k plus one okay now can you tell me what is limit k tends to infinity k by k plus 1 how will you do this type of infinite limits take the maximum power of k in the numerator and denominator outside so it will simply be limit k tends to infinity k by k into 1 plus 1 by k right your k gets cancelled out so it is actually limit k tends to infinity 1 by 1 plus 1 by k now apply the limits you will be getting the value as simply 1 because your 1 by k goes to 0 okay that means limit of k by k plus 1 so the u, limit of uk is actually you are getting it as 1 which is not equal to 0 therefore you can say that this series is diverging because the kth term is not going to 0 its effect is still uh, significant it is not going to zero okay therefore you can say that the series is diversion okay let us look at one more example sigma n square or simply sigma k square okay since we are using the index k i am using the symbol k square here also you can see that the kth term goes to infinity okay as k becomes bigger therefore this series is also divergent okay one more example minus n by 2n plus 1 so basically as per our notation if you are using k if you want i can you can also use n no issue in that so it is of actually the series minus k by 2k plus 5 okay i'll use the notation n for you okay so the uh, the letter doesn't matter okay so here the nth term is actually minus n by 2n plus 1 so limit instead of k i'm using n here n tends to infinity un is actually limit n tends to infinity minus n by 2n plus 5 can you tell me the value can you find out the value here so take the maximum power of n outside so it is actually limit n tends to infinity minus n by n into 2 plus 5 by n okay so your n gets cancelled out so it is actually limit n tends to infinity minus 1 by 2 plus 5 by n the value is simply minus 1 by 2 which is not zero therefore this series is also divergent okay so even if it is k and I, I hope you can do everything because it's just the letter there only thing is that what is going to vary here in this cases the variation is k in these cases the variation is just n okay the letter doesn't matter okay so i hope it is clear and if you look at this series also you can find out your uk is actually uh, your un is actually minus one if your uh, n is even and un is actually 1 if your n is odd if you can check it out here if your n is 1 you will be getting my 1 if n here is 2 it will be getting minus 1 like this so if it is even it will be minus 1 odd if it will be uh, 1 so you, you limit n tends to infinity u n it can either be minus 1 or 1 that means it is not a fixed value because it will be changing from minus 1 to 1 therefore it does not exist because the limit should be a fixed value here the limit will not exist because for odd terms i will be getting 1 for even terms i will be getting minus 1 so the limiting value itself does will not does exist therefore you can say that uh, this is also divergent because if it is convergent it should have limit n tends to infinity un should be zero here the limit itself does not exist therefore we can say that that series is also 
actually diverge. So this is a simple uh, divergence test using the kth term. Okay, so these are some simple divergence tests. Okay, now let us move forward. Uh, let us before uh, before we discuss some tests, I'll just make use of some simple uh, results without proof. It's very simple thing. Suppose you have two series. Suppose you have a series uh, AK is the sigma AK. And suppose you have a series sigma bk, suppose ak converges to a, and suppose sigma bk converges to b. So remember I am talking about convergence series here, I am not talking about divergence series, I am taking two convergence series sigma ak and sigma bk. Okay, suppose ak converges to a and bk converges to b, then sigma ak plus bk, this new series will converge to a plus b. Okay, this new series will converge to a plus b. Okay, for example, suppose I am looking at the series sigma 1 by 2 raised to k, then I am looking at the series sigma 1 by 3 raised to k, both are actually uh, geometric series and you know the sum, it is actually 1 by 1 minus 1 by 2 in this case, here it will be 1, my, 1, my, 1 minus 1 by 3 in this case, so these are the geometric series and if I look at the new series, 1 by 2 raised to k plus 1 by 3 raised to k, I am getting a new series here. How is, suppose your k is varying from 0 to infinity, what will be the new series here? It will simply be 1 plus 1, okay, 1 plus 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3, okay, again 1 by 2 square plus 1. So, this new series will also be conversion and its sum will be simply be the sum of the individual series okay so this is true only if, if both of them are convergent series so if sigma ak is convergent sigma bk is convergent then sigma ak plus bk will also be convergent that is one result okay and another result is suppose you have a series sigma ak okay suppose i am going to multiply it by a constant c okay which is non zero okay suppose c is non zero i am looking at the series c ak okay now, this multiplication will not affect the convergence or divergence of the series. Okay, that is, if sigma ak is convergent, sigma c ak also will be convergent. Okay, only thing is you can take, say, take, take c outside. Okay, and similarly, if sigma ak is divergent, then sigma c ak will also be divergent. That is another idea. This multiplication by a non zero will not, constant will not affect the divergence or convergence of a given series that is one other result okay this we can use in applications i'll show you some applications also with respect to it okay and one more thing is that suppose you have a convert suppose you have a series sigma ak okay, suppose it k is actually 0 to infinity okay if i consider this series suppose sigma is equal to k is equal to 10 to infinity ak okay Actually, both are the same series. Only thing is that I have just removed 10 terms there. Okay. Now, e, the removal of 10 terms or a removal of finite number of terms will not affect the convergence or divergence. Okay. Suppose if sigma ak is convergent, this also will be convergent. Okay. Suppose sigma ak is divergent, this also will be divergent. Why? Because if it is divergent, it will be summing up to infinity. And just I am just I have just removed some 10 terms over here or 9 terms over here. Okay, and if I subtract it from infinity, still you will be getting it as infinity only. Okay, so deletion or addition of a few terms will not affect the convergence or divergence. Okay, this result will be help, particularly helpful when you will deal with comparison test where you will have to write down the form of the kth term. Okay, sometimes you, can, you can't write a correct form of the kth term because there will be some terms in the beginning, okay, which will uh, not be according to a, some given pattern. For example, suppose your uh, series is 2 plus 3 plus again 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by so basically you can say that this is according to a pattern 1 by k but these two terms are not there according to the pattern so generally you can't say that this series is sigma 1 by k but if you remove these two terms still you can talk of convergence or divergence of the series okay just if you ignore these terms it will not affect the convergence or divergence of the whole series. So even if you remove a first few terms, still you, it will not affect the convergence or divergence of the full series. So for in order to discuss those type of questions, when we will discuss, I will tell you, you can just ignore some few terms so that you will be getting a definite pattern. Okay. And why is that pattern necessary? Because in the coming test, you will have to write down that pattern to discuss, to decide whether the series is convergent or not. So you will have to know how to write down the pattern. Okay. So for writing down the pattern, you can use these type of tricks. You can just remove some few terms so that your pattern is a good one. Okay. So in those times, I will be discussing these results okay so the for now the time being let us look at the results once again suppose your series sigma you can sigma we can suppose both of them are convergent 
then sigma u k plus v k and also sigma u k minus v k also will be convergent at in the sum will be like this. Okay. And another thing, um, if you multiply a series by c, it will not affect its convergence or divergence. Okay, if it is convergent, it will still be convergent. If it is divergent, it will still be divergent. And remember, C is a non-zero constant because if it's C is zero, definitely the entire series will become zero. Okay, so that is why C is taken as a non-zero constant. And similarly, if you just ignore a few terms, uh, it will not affect the convergence or divergence. So these are some useful results which you can use in applications. Okay, now we will decide discuss some more applications of the result related to this result here. Okay, so let us look at some exact examples here. Now look at this example. So can you find test whether this series is convergent or not? So if you look at this series, you can see that this is actually made up of two series here. Actually, it is made up of 3 by 4 raised to k and also 2 by 5 raised to k minus 1. Okay, so it is made up of two series sigma 3 by 4 raised to k and sigma 2 by 5 raised to k minus 1. Okay, now what can you say about this series? So if you don't know that series, let us write a few terms. It is actually 3 by 4, right? Okay, plus 3 by 4 square plus 3 by 4 cube. Okay, now you can see that this is actually a geometric series with uh, 3 by 4 as the eighth term and common ratio and 1 minus 1 by 4 is the common ratio. So it is actually a by 1 minus. So basically the series will converge and if your common ratio 1 by 4 is less than 1, it is less than 1. So therefore 3 by 4 raised to k is convergent. Similarly, if you look at the second series, it is 2 by 5 raised to k minus 1, right? So, it is actually 2 by 5 raised to 1 minus 1 is actually 0, so plus again 2 by 5 plus 2 by 5 square. Here, the common ratio is 1 by 5, which is less than 1. Therefore, then also you can say that the series is convergent. And what is the sum? It is actually a by 1 minus r. It is 2 by 1 minus 1 by 5. Okay. So, it is actually, if you clear, clear it out, it is actually... 3 by 4 by, I think it's 3, so basically the sum is 1 here, right? 4 minus 1, okay. So, the sum is actually 1 there and here it is actually, so it is actually 10 by 4 or it is actually 5 by 2. Please correct me if I am wrong. Okay, so what will be the final sum? Final sum so will be simply be 1 minus 5 by 2. Okay, so we can ch check it out. So, this is a consequence of the previous results which we discussed. This is a geometric series. This is a geometric series. So, the difference will be actually be the difference of their sums. Okay, so that is one idea. Okay, moving forward, look at this series here, 5 by k. So, I have test, test for convergence of the series. So, this is actually your 5 plus 5 by 2 plus 5 by 3 plus 5 by 4, etc. So, you can say that this, this whole series has been multiplied by 5, which is 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus etc. And what is this series? This series is yes, similarly your uh, this is your P series with P is equal to 1 harmonic series. You know that this is divergent. So because this is harmonic series with P is equal to 1 and this it is divergent if P is less than or equal to 1, convergent if P is greater than 1. Therefore, this one is actually divergent. Hence, 5 into this whole one also will be divergent. So this is a divergent series. So basically you can see that multiplication by a non-zero constant will not affect the convergence or divergence. That is the result being used there. Okay. I am moving forward this series. Sigma k is equal to 10 1 by k. Again, this is a harmonic series. Only difference is that we have omitted a few terms. Okay. So, you have omitted the terms 1, 1 plus 1 by 2 up to 1 by 9. Okay. I have omitted up to except 1 by 9. Okay, this much has been omitted and only we are considering 1 by 10 plus 1 by 11 plus etc. So, as we had already discussed, the removal of a few terms will not affect the convergence. So, anyway, this will also be divergent because it is a harmonic series with P is equal to 1. Therefore, this series is also divergent. Okay. So, moving forward, look at this series 4 by 2 raised to k. Okay. So, again, it's very simple. You can do it in other ways. So, basically, if you want, two ways you can do it. Either you can write this 4 plus... Um, 4 by 2 plus 4 by 2 square plus 4 by 2 cube. So, it is a geometric series. So, its sum will be 4 by 1 minus 1 by 2 because your common ratio is 1 by 2 here. So, it is actually uh, 4, 8. I think it is 8. Okay. So, 4 by, uh, okay, it is 8 here actually. Or you can consider this as 4 into 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2. So, you can consider like this also. You know this is a geometric series. Its sum is actually 2. So, it will simply be 4 into 2. 
here also you can so you can consider in two ways you can either take your constant outside and you can decide how series or you can take together with the constant also okay so basically this constant will not affect the convergence or divergence of the series okay one more example here you can try it yourself please try it yourself this is another series so here if you make it more simplified split the numerator it will simply be sigma k is equal to 1 to infinity 3 raised to k minus 1 by 6 raised to k minus 1 minus 1 by 6 raised to k minus 1 so this is actually uh, 3 by 6 raised to k minus 1 minus 1 by 6 raised to k minus 1 so it is actually 1 by 2 raised to k minus 1 minus 1 by 6 raised to k minus 1 sigma okay so basically it's a geometric series this is also a geometric series so just write yourself so you know the sum of this it is y by 1 minus r again this is a by 1 minus r please try to do it yourself and find the sum here okay so that how it is clear so these are some simple examples related to this thing okay now we will discuss the first major test which is called comparison test okay first major test so from now onwards we are going to decide discuss about non negative series all your terms will be non negative okay so we now onwards you are just going to discuss about positive term to series or non negative series where sigma uk where your uk is greater than or equal to zero okay so the first few tests will be based on this non negative series and the last test which we will be discussing will be based on the and in general series so then we will be discussing the last one so now we will be focusing only on non negative series and for that first we will discuss about convergence the comparison test Okay, so what is comparison test? Okay, it's a very simple idea actually. So basically, there are many forms of this comparison test. Okay, so suppose you have a series sigma u k. Okay, suppose you can find a series v k such that. Okay, your limit k tends to infinity u k by v k is finite. Okay, suppose you can find the series a v k such that limit k tends to infinity u k by v k is finite then both of them will converge or diverge together that is if you if v k converges u k will converge if you v k diverges u k will diverge so that, that is the one form of comparison there are many forms are there this is one for, we will be using this form this is one form of comparison test so how what is the meaning of this suppose you have a series u sigma u k okay now related to this series sigma u k we will consider a series sigma v k usually the series sigma vk will be your harmonic series so usually because you know the harmonic series you know when it will converge when it will diverge so usually your the series would be harmonic series how to take the harmonic series i will tell you shortly it's very simple so usually the series comparison test the series which is used for comparison will usually be your harmonic series and if your sigma uk by vk and if you take the limit of that suppose it is actually some constant l it's fixed then uk and vk will diverge or converge together so this is the statement of comparison test there are also other statements also but i am only following this one here. so very simple okay so this is they are talked in terms of a can be no issue so that is it okay now how to suppose you have been given a series sigma ak how to decide upon a harmonic series how to decide upon a com series bk for comparison how will you decide upon a series pk for comparison it's very simple suppose you are being in the series suppose your series is like this it is 2n plus 3 by n cube plus 2 suppose you are to check the convergence of the series okay so suppose you have to uh, check the convergence of the series how will you decide a appropriate bk for convergence very simple just take the maximum power of n from numerator and denominator just take out the maximum power of n from numerator and denominator it will be simply be n into 2 plus 3 by n 3 3 by n sorry and here it is n cube into 1 plus 2 by n cube okay so now you have if you cancel it out it is actually sigma 1 by n square into 2 plus 3 by n divided by 1 plus 2 by n cube okay now this one this 1 by n square will be your appropriate bk so you will choose the bk or bn as just 1 by n square why what is the use of that so before if you this is your actually your a n here so if i take your bn as 1 by n square what will be your a n by bn what will happen your 1 by n square will get cancelled out and you will be getting it as 2 by 3 by n plus 1 plus 2 by n cube okay now when you apply n to n to infinity you will be getting the limit as fixed quantity which is just two okay so in order to cancel out this quantity you just take your bn also as simply 1 b 1 by n square now if you apply the limits you will be getting the uh, limit as a fixed value 
ओके सो वन यू गेट इट फिक्सड वैल्यू यू कैन से दैट ए एन एंड बी एन विल कन्वर्ज और डाइवर्स टुगेदर नाउ यू नो वन बाय एन स्क्वायर इज एक्चुअली योर हार्मोनिक सीरीज विद पी इज इक्वल टू टू सो दिस कन्वर्जस देयर फॉर दिस वन आल्सो विल कन्वर्ज सो दिस इज द आइडिया सो हाउ व्हाट इज द आइडिया गिवन ए सीरीज Take the maximum power of n or k, whatever may be. So, so here I have used n. If you want, you can use k. If you, if the notation is k. Take the maximum power of k from the numerator and denominator and look at the effective power. Here, the effective power was one by n square. So the maximum power here was n. Here, n cube. So effectively, you had one by n square. So you take the harmonic series as simply be one by n square. Okay. So the take the maximum power of n from numerator and denominator, and the effective power will be your corresponding harmonic series. You would divide it by b k. that means you will be getting a fixed value so that is the idea how to construct the comparison a comparing series so this is the idea. we will do some problems here but you have, you may have understood this i hope it is clear and one more example here is that here everywhere this is not possible suppose your mm, series is actually suppose it is like ln log n by uh, 2 raised to n there on all you can't take this n out so for this test is not possible in every case okay for that we will be discussing some new test now so this only this test only will be, be possible in cases where it is actually your numerator and denominator are polynomials or they are rational functions only in those cases it is much easier otherwise finding a compa comparing series is actually very difficult okay if you know the comparing series well and good but it is not always easy to find a comparing series so for that we will be deciding uh, we'll be discussing some more new test in the next session okay so every bit time it is not easy to find a comparing series but for these type of series it is very easy to construct and we will do some examples to illustrate this again okay so let us look at some more examples so don't be worried about the state and everything we'll do some examples and then you will understand okay look at look at the look at the series 1 by root k plus 1 so as i told you your uk your ak your uk it is actually why we 1 by root of k plus 1 okay only root is there for k so what will you do take the maximum power of k from the numerator and denominator the numerator there is no maximum power of k and only in denominator it is actually it is actually if i take root k outside you will be getting this 1 plus 1 by root k okay so the maximum power in the denominator is root k if i take it outside it is actually 1 by 1 plus root k so the effective power of k is actually 1 by root k so you take your b k as simply be 1 by root k okay now if you take so this is effective power here so now if you consider a k by b k what will you get you will be getting this 1 by root k into 1 plus 1 by root k for your a k by 1 by root k this will be get cancelled out and now so you will be getting the value simply be 1 by 1 plus 1 by root k now if you take limit k tends to infinity 1 by 1 plus 1 by root k what will you get this will actually be equal to 1 because 1 by root k this root k will go to infinity so 1 by root k will go to zero so that means you will be getting it as 1 which is a fixed and finite value which means your ak and bk will converge or diverge together okay but what is your bk bk is actually be one bk is the series Uh, sigma b k is the series sigma one by root k. It's again harmonic series with your p is equal to your p here is actually one by two, right? So because it is one plus one by root two plus one by root three plus etc. So basically your p here is actually one by two. With therefore since p is less than one, this series is divergent. Okay, one by root k is divergent. That means your a k is also divergent. So this series is also divergent. Okay, so that's a simple idea. So how what will you do? take out the maximum power of k from the numerator and denominator look at the effective one that will be your harmonic corresponding comparing series okay so take the comparing series as that effective one so take ak by bk and apply the limit so that from there we can say that both the series will converge or diverge together you know the properties of harmonic series for to decide whether the given series bk is divergent or not from there you can deduce the convergence or divergence of ak Okay, so let us move forward. One more example: one by two k square plus k. Please try to do it by yourself. What will you do? Take the mass. So look at a k here. Where a k is actually one by two k square plus k. What's the next idea? Take the maximum power of k outside from numerator and denominator. So it is here numerator no maximum power of k denominator. You have k square. So it will be two plus k by k square. That is simply be one by k. Two plus k by k square, which is one by k. So you have to take your b k as Just one by k square because this is the effective term outside. So your a k by b k will become one by two plus one by k because one by k square will get cancelled out. Now if you apply the limit 
as k tends to infinity what will you get you will be getting the value as simply b 1 by 2 which is fixed and then we can say that a k and b k will converge or diverge together but your b k is the series sigma 1 by k square which is harmonic series with p is equal to 2 you know that harmonic series will converge if p is greater than 1 therefore b k is convergent hence a k is also convergent okay i hope you now understand the power of harmonic series we have not we have just discussed the result that is very important because using that harmonic series we can decide on the convergence or divergence of a vast number of series that's the power of the harmonic series okay so very important uh, the harmonic series is very important for you to test whether a series is convergent or not okay one more example so this one please try to do yourself uh, don't be afraid it's very simple the only thing is that just use the idea which i told you take the maximum of cover of k outside so it will simply be your ak is actually b uh, 3k cube minus 2k square plus 4 by k raised to 7 minus k cube plus 2 so if you take the maximum power outside it will be k cube will be 3 minus 2 by k plus 4 by k cube divided by the maximum power is k raised to 7 so it is 1 minus k cube by k raised to 7 is 1 by k raised to 4 plus 2 by k raised to 7 here. Okay, so the effective power is 1 by k raised to 4. First you have 3 minus 2 by k plus 4 by k cube divided by 1 minus 1 by k raised to 4 uh, plus 2 by k raised to 7. Okay, so this is the thing here. Okay, so this is your AK. So how, what will be your BK? BK will be the effective power which is nothing but this thing. So it is BK, you take it as 1 by K raised to 4. So when you take AK by BK, you will just be getting this quantity. That is, will just simply be your AK by BK will simply be 3 minus 2 by K plus 4 by K cube, right? Whereby 1 minus 1 by K raised to 4 plus 2 by K raised to 7. Now when you give k goes to infinity, this will become 0, this will become 0, this will become 0, this will become 0. Only thing is you will be getting the value as simply 1. That means your ak by bk either converge or diverge together. But your bk is 1 by k raised to 4 which is harmonic series with p is equal to just 4. Which diver which converges because p is greater than or equal to 1. Just, sorry, which diverges because p is greater than 1. Hence, this series also will converge. Okay, very simple. Okay, so you can, I hope you understand this also. And moving forward, another series. This is not a harmonic series here, so you can take two outside here. But can you tell me how will you do this one? Okay, one by two raised to k minus one. This is how. What will you do? Okay, just use your common sense. If you have understood these concepts here, here also you can take the same concept over here. Here you can't not take k outside, but if you take two raised to k outside, and if you what will happen? You will literally simply be one by two raised to k into 1 minus 1 by 2 raised to k and if you take your bk as the series 1 by 2 raised to k what can you say about the bk okay only if you understood this concept you will understand this because it's the same logic only here because since this is a known series that's why i have taken that that problem here okay so see, this is your bk this you know that this bk is actually the geometric series which will converge therefore ak by bk will simply be 1 by 1 minus 1 by 2 raised to k here. So when k goes to infinity, you will be getting it as 1. Therefore, this series and this series will converge or diverge together. Therefore, since this is convergent geometric series, this is also be convergent. That is one idea. Or you can use the geometric series. Uh, so that's the idea here. Okay, so using geometric series, you can, so you can do design. So if you understood this idea here of taking k outside, uh, taking 2 raised to k, Outside is actually a sim on a similar lines. So, in order to emphasize that, I have used this form also very simply. Okay, moving forward, one more question here. The final question here actually, you have not been given the uh, general form of the akth term. You have to write down the akth term. So, can you write down the akth term here? Can you write down the akth term here, general form? So, look at the pattern, look for the pattern here. Okay, so basically, you can see that numerators have been having only odd terms 3, 5, 7, 9. So, basically, it will either be of the form uh, 2k plus 1 or 2k minus 1 because odd terms are either 2k plus 1 or 2k minus 1. Okay, so what will be here? So, if the first term you have 3, so it will should be 2 into 1 plus 1. So, basically, it will so second term you have 5, so it is 2 into 2 plus 1, 5. So, basically, your numerator would be 2k plus 1, right. Okay, and what is the denominator? Denominator is actually, they are squares, right? 4, 9, 16, 25. So, square of 2. Okay, square of, a uh, square of uh, 2 here, square of 3 here. So, the first term you have 2 square. For the second term you have 3 square. 
for the third term you have four square so basically this will be actually be this will should be first term you have two square so basically k plus one square second term you have three square so it is k plus one square so it is two k plus one by k plus one square right because for the first term i'm getting two square so one plus one square for second term i get two plus one square third term i'm getting three plus one square so using that idea you will have this one so your ukth term is a kth term here is actually 2k plus 1 by k plus 1 square or it is k square plus 2k plus 1 okay i hope it is clear just look at the look for patterns and try to uh, write down what comes to your mind okay look at look for some patterns here okay, here you can see that this is an o terms here these are squares here so you are looking at the patterns we have written this one okay so you have to do some examples only then you will understand how to write down these patterns so actually you will be getting only simple patterns they won't ask you complicated ones from examples we will do some examples in a later session also so i hope it is clear so once you have found out the akth of the four term okay i hope it is very easy for you to do it, do the rest okay why so just take out the maximum power of k outside it will be k into 2 plus 1 by k divided by k square into 1 plus 2 by k plus 1 by k square so effective power is 1 by k okay so we will have to compare with series b k is equal to 1 by k so when you compare you will be getting the sum as actually 2 the limit as actually 2 therefore a k and b k will converge or diverge together but your b k is sigma 1 by k it is divergent therefore this series also is divergent okay so i hope that is also clear so this is comparison test okay so i hope that's okay so in the next session we will be discussing about some new test which is called ratio and root test so that's all now thank you